Thank you, Dharmendra Bhai. And thank you very much, Bansi sir, for inviting us as organizing committee. We are here. So actually, uh, we are a uh, pleasure to have you all here. And at, uh, this is one of the last talks. And we have a uh, full house here. So I'm, I'm really happy. So my talk should have been before Dr. Ami Sangvi because uh, whatever she has explained, it is the prevention, CGM and prevention. And prevention of what? It is about hypoglycemia. So definitely my talk is about hypoglycemia in real world. Who is really at risk? So before explaining anything, definitely I should explain uh, or I should have uh, explained the definition of hypoglycemia. That is blood sugar level less than 70. So frequent yet often underestimated complication. Uh, usually we should ask the leading question for hypoglycemia to each and every patient. Though we always uh, think that if patient is on sulfonylurea or insulin, then only we should ask. But at physician level, in busy OPDs, where uh, as a diabetologist or endocrinologist, we see very less number of patients in comparison to physicians. And we get the chance to ask the leading question, still we don't ask the question. And this is one of the biggest problem, because uh, we usually underestimate this complication. And, and I give very much importance to hypoglycemia, and we have worked uh, uh, a lot in this field. So, uh, defining hypoglycemia, we know that level 1 hypoglycemia is between uh, 55 to 70 milligram per deciliter blood sugar. Level 2 hypoglycemia, when it is less than 55 or 54. And level 3 hypoglycemia is when blood glucose levels resulting in severe cognitive impairment and external assistance is required. So it is very simple definition of uh, level 1, 2 and 3 hypoglycemia. So prevalence and incidence in diabetes. If you see type 1 diabetes, definitely insulin dependent diabetes. So it has around 30 to 40 percent of patients. This is uh, data from ADA. But in our patient, I would say, though average HB1C in type 1 diabetes is around 8.5 to 9 percent, still hypoglycemia incidence rate could be very high, though we don't have our own studies in type 1 diabetes. So it could be around 50 percent or maybe 55 percent, I don't know. So there is more incidence of hypoglycemia, even though uh, average HB1C is on higher side. In type 2 diabetes, yes, now we have the molecules which actually apparently they do not cause hypoglycemia like DPP-4 inhibitors, SGLT-2 inhibitors, metformin and even uh, GLP-1 receptor agonist along with pioglitazone. This most of the molecules they do not cause hypoglycemia except sulfonylurea and insulin but in our practice I are uh, around 40-50% of patients are on sulfonylurea. And uh, this is again data of 10 to 15 percent, which I would defer, and I would say around are 25 percent of patients at least have uh, hypoglycemia once in a year. Real world consideration. So, despite advancements in insulin, we have newer insulins uh, now, co formulations, uh, oral agents with improved safety profile, the incidence of hypoglycemia remains unacceptably high in real world settings. And uh, this is very much true. Uh, so high risk population, definitely I have already explained even in my first slide I said that sulfonylurea and insulin user patients, especially type 1 diabetic patients are at higher risk of uh, getting hypoglycemic. Uh, the elderly population, uh, usually we forget them to uh, tell or even to ask the leading question. So elderly patients are vulnerable due to age related changes in glucose metabolism decreases renal and hepatic function and polypharmacy. Cognitive decline impairs recognition and self-management of hypoglycemia. Impaired hypoglycemia awareness, this is again a very big problem and around 25 percent of type 1 diabetic patients develop impaired awareness of hypoglycemia. So leading to a six-fold increased risk of severe episodes due to failure to perceive early warning symptoms. So most of our type 1 diabetic patients who are getting hypoglycemic again and again, they will definitely not going to feel, they will not perceive the hypoglycemia many a times when they should. And they directly land into 
a level 3 hypoglycemia. So cardiovascular risk of hypoglycemia, we, we know that the patients who are had, uh, who had uh, any cardiovascular problem, they are having higher chance and vice versa. Hypoglycemic patients have higher chances of mortality due to hypoglycemia. So counter-regulatory response where hypoglycemia uh, triggers the release of catecholamines and which can provoke arrhythmias and this is one of the commonest known reason for increase in mortality. Adverse cardiovascular outcome is there with hypoglycemia and it is proven and we have a code trial which is very much uh, relevant to this uh, statement. So increased mortality due to hypoglycemia which is associated with increased uh, mortality in patients with diabetes especially those with type 2 large scale uh, clinical trials have uh, revealed higher mortality rates in patient experiencing severe hypoglycemia or level 3 hypoglycemia. So impact on mortality, we know that a core trial which has shown that higher mortality rate in patients experiencing severe hypoglycemia. Type 2 diabetes were increased mortality associated with hypoglycemia which is very common even than type 1, di uh, type 1 diabetes because most of our type 1 diabetic patients are at younger age group and higher risk population where elderly and those with cardiovascular disease disease require cautious glycemic control. So risk factors for hypoglycemia which according to references which I am right now showing which is age and insulin therapy uh, and, and lifestyle factors where irregular meal patterns is there. Duration of diabetes using sulfonylurea and alcohol consumption, renal impairment, uh, incorrect insulin dosing. Uh, unplanned physical activity, cognitive impairment, history of severe hypoglycemia, tight glycemic targets, multiple diabetes medication, sleep disturbance and stress and illness. But according to me, uh, as we want to talk about real world, where I would say poor follow up, this is one of the commonest reason. Uh, sometimes our patient when we ask them to come after one month or one month or three months and they come after one year when they land into hypoglycemia or they start getting hypoglycemic symptoms. This is one of the commonest reason that I have also found, so I'm talking about real world. Non-judicial use of sulfonylureas, uh, again this is related to po poor fo follow-up as well. Non, no monitoring, so Dr. Ami was talking about continuous glucose monitoring but I would say that our uh, patients don't even monitor with self-monitoring of uh, with glucose meter that regularly. If we ask them to check at least once in a week, they, they check uh, once in a month or once in a year. There we have seen many of our patients. So this is one of the important reason in real world. And fasting, we forget usually when I uh, when I was searching many other uh, literature. Fasting was not given that importance, but fasting is one of the most important reasons for hypoglycemia, especially long fasting in Jains, in Muslims, and uh, in, in Hindus, we, we don't do such kind of fasting nowadays. I see most of the people eat more in fasting, so I would not consider that as fasting. So pregnancy, what I found in literature that pregnant, pregnant women especially with type 1 diabetes face higher risk due to hormonal changes. The first trimester is associated with heightened insulin sensitivity and requiring careful insulin adjustment and it causes, uh, it, it uh, has higher risk of getting hypoglycemia. But I differ from this statement myself because what I have seen in most of our uh, diabetic pregnant women that their hypoglycemia threshold goes so low that they don't feel hypoglycemia at this threshold what we were defining in our uh, hypoglycemia thing. So most of our patient even they don't feel hypoglycemia at even 70 or 60. Uh, I would like to ask anyone uh, or uh, Dr. Dharmendra Bhai, uh, Ami Madam is there, uh, sir. Uh, if, uh, uh, have you feel, feel, felt this? Most of our diabetic patient with pregnancy, they do not feel hypoglycemia at lower level and this is so much common. So this is one of our paper, uh, consensus statement on hypoglycemia. Dr. Amit was the first author of this paper and along with that we in D Genius group this, uh, wrote this paper of uh, hypoglycemia. So you can go through, you can scan it and, and you can read whole hypoglycemia paper. 
so impact of quality on, uh, impact on quality of life we know that hypoglycemia causes so many problems and and especially quality of life once the patient get hypoglycemia once in a lifetime they are so much afraid because hyperglycemia is not so symptomatic and it is symptomatic after many years maybe 5 10 or 15 years but hypoglycemia one incidence uh, can shock the patient and patient doesn't want to land into hypoglycemia so they are always afraid to use higher doses of insulin when we write them sulfonylurea and once they get hypoglycemia they don't want us to prescribe such kind of medication and this is one of the commonest reason for even hyperglycemia so psychological burden is there and treatment adherence this is what i was telling the treatment adherence is not good with the patient who has frequent hypoglycemia social and lifestyle limitation so patients often report hesit hesitancy to engage in physical activities or daily routines due to fear of hypoglycemia this can lead to social isolation and reduce ability to participate fully in work uh, uh, family and uh, leisure activities. So long term health uh, concerns are there. Due to hypoglycemia, those patients get uh, uh, many fluctuations of blood sugar and hyperglycemia is one of the most commonest reason in hypoglycemic patient as well. So long term health concerns are there. So strategies for hypoglycemia prevention though already it's been explained in uh, earlier talks. So patient education, it is one of the most important thing and to prevent hypoglycemia, I would say the, the most important thing is self-monitoring. So self-monitoring of blood glucose, whether by glucose meter or even continuous glucose monitoring is the most important thing to prevent. So what, what gets measured, it gets done. So this is why all the patients should uh, check their blood sugar regularly and we should educate them every time they come to our clinic. Glucose monitoring technologies, again, medication adjustment. So the patient who are getting, uh, who are having uh, frequent hypoglycemia in those patients, we should change the medication and, and we should try to avoid such medication which can cause hypoglycemia. Lifestyle modification, especially exercise timing, we should ask those patients uh, exact timing of exercise and their meal pattern. Some of the patients who are doing, uh, who has erratic lifestyle, they are also having uh, higher chances of hypoglycemia. So. Uh, future direction in hypoglycemia management is art artificial pancreas system that is uh, insulin pumps though uh, right now we have hybrid, hybrid closed loop pumps but definitely in ne near future uh, like bionic pancreas we are going to have artificial pancreas completely working on its own smart insulin pens which are going to help and smart insulins as well. AI powered prediction models as we have uh, many of the uh, models right now available but uh, I don't know how exactly they, they, they can help because our patient do not use uh, self-monitoring tools even and, and not continuous glucose monitoring tools but this predictive model of uh, continuous glucose monitoring can be helpful in preventing hypoglycemia and novel therapeutic targets and agents. So especially as I mentioned the group of drugs, uh, GLP-1 receptor agonists, DPP-4 inhibitors, SGLT-2 inhibitors, metformin, pioglitazone, even imiglimin, which can be helpful in prevention and reducing hypoglycemia risk. With this, I'll conclude. Thank